It's a crisp morning in Sunbury and it starts like any other. The trains and buses of commuters file out to Melbourne. The roads are starting to get busy with parents carting their children to school. The Reynolds begin the day like any family, but what the family of five do on an ordinary day is unlike most. In the Reynolds home, there is no curriculum, no assigned books, no tests, no grades or classes. It's reality or unschooling. People imagine like you're on school holidays. You get up, you make plans. Um, if the kids are interested in something, we'll follow that up. If they've got play dates with their friends, we go to that. Unschooling is a form of homeschooling where children are free to pursue what they want to learn. Choice and control of learning resides with Shay's children. Um, mummy, are rattlesnakes dangerous? I know that I'm in rattlesnakes are. All rattlesnakes. They may find outside help in parents, books or classes, but the decision is theirs. Um, most stuff comes up naturally in conversation. Kids are naturally curious, like from when they first start pointing at things when they're little and asking, you know, what's that? Or why, 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 why? Um, we just follow them from that, really. So without saying, you know, you're this old and it's this day of the week, so we must do X amount of hours, it just kind of filters into our daily life. Learning happens as a side effect of living life. To unschoolers, children are programmed to want to learn. There is no point where informal learning becomes inadequate. While commuter buses rumble through Sunbury, the Reynolds children are at home in their pyjamas, and that's where they'll stay. Tanner, eight, might practice her reading. Willow, five, has her eyes set on the Reynolds art supplies. Four-year-old Harper will likely play. Regardless, the children will choose what activities to pursue or avoid. John Holt, a teacher and author, coined the term unschooling in the 1970s. To Holt, unschooling was allowing children as much freedom to learn in the world as parents can comfortably bear. Learners make learning. But ask unschoolers what unschooling is, and you'll get answers ranging from not school to child-led learning to total freedom. As with any movement, some are more radical than others. Well, I don't call myself a radical unschooler. Um, I'm certainly an unschooler or a natural learner from the education sense. As far as the parenting side, the all-encompassing sort of thing, that's not what we do. Shay says unschooling may be about finding your yes, but that doesn't mean never saying no. My food um, theories don't fall under that. Neither do my um, buying things. Like if the kids want stuff, we don't just buy it for them. They get pocket money um, that they can spend on whatever they like. Still, the Reynolds live with very few rules. Her children could watch TV all day, but instead she provides choices. I'm like a facilitator, I would say. Um, I help them get information about things that they want to get information about. I answer questions. Um, I help them look up things on the internet. I take them to the library. I take them to the social groups we go to and their after-school activities. Um, I bring new and interesting things into the house, like strewing the term that most unschoolers use. So I'll bring new books and new movies and new scenarios and new experiences in and see where that sort of takes us. It's estimated 50,000 Australian children are homeschooled each year, a number that is on the rise. 15% of homeschoolers are estimated to be unschoolers and many more use unschooling techniques. To be legal in Australia, unschoolers must register their children for homeschooling from the age of six and develop a curriculum. Unschoolers classed as homeschoolers must prove to Department of Education officials that they can meet standards of education. But what does the evidence say? How does unschooling measure up? Currently I'm working with Dr. Peter Gray on a study on unschooled young adults. And um, we've done a study previously that was published in the Journal of Unschooling and Alternative Learning on unschoolers um, as, a, as a huge group. We got 255 responses and 232 for the study. Professor Gina Riley is one of the few academics to have studied unschoolers. She's also researched intrinsic motivation. My studies in intrinsic motivation have um, brought me to the fact that learning should be, you know, you should learn about what you love. You should learn about what you're passionate about, what you're curious about, and it should be the core. And that's where her research shows the success in unschooling lies. Our young adults who have been unschooled have 
take in their interests and their play. And, and a lot of them have made it into their work. Evidence that unschooling works or doesn't is mostly anecdotal, but play-based learning has been researched. Somebody once asked me, but what if your kids want to build sandcastles and play video games all day? I said, well, you assume they're not learning anything from doing that. Like, it's engineering and science and physics and mathematics and all of those things. Dr Alan Thomas has been researching how children learn for 20 years. And they do this through, through observation. You know, they've got eyes and ears, they pick up language, they, uh, they observe what they see, they do it through, uh, through play. Play provides tremendous opportunities at an age between 7 and 11, for example, when it would be quite scorned in school and only seen as a recreation. Uh, and they learn by following their own interests. They, don't, they learn in real life. Research shows play stimulates problem solving, creativity and imagination. It also helps social skills, including a child's ability to compromise and cooperate. And so unschoolers place equal value on park days and academic learning. <laughs> Shay says the iPad is one item of play that really works for her family. Things that they're interested in really do stick. Like we just had that conversation in the kitchen before when I opened the dishwasher and she saw all the steam come out. My five-year-old saw all the steam come out. And she was like, oh, it's hot. And I said, oh, I remember that, like we're watching this song on YouTube they really love about the water cycle. And she was like, oh, it's vapor. Because they, you know, they like the song and they're interested in rain and all that sort of stuff. metaphor, the analogy to food. If you allow a child to eat only what he or she wants, then they will possibly not eat their vegetables uh, and will just eat um, burgers and fries all day and with, with added dollops of coke and they become mortally obese very quickly. So it's unhealthy, it's an unhealthy diet. So unschooling, I believe, is an unhealthy educational diet. Dr. David Zinger is trained in pedagogy, the science of learning and child development. Mm -hmm. Keep them simple. Yes. Allowing children to follow their own interests is, is very good pedagogy, but we need to make sure that we are also facilitating their introduction to other curricula. Reading is one area that worries Dr. Zinger. You need to be a well-skilled, well-trained professional to be able to do that properly. Children can't do it on their own. For the eldest of the Reynolds girls, Tanner, reading has certainly come later than what's considered normal. Like I was just saying to my husband recently about, wow, so now we've got an eight-year-old that can't read on her own yet, you know? That was okay when she was six. But Shay says she sees and trusts that her daughter's reading is coming. She's quite motivated to want to read by herself and it means it's effortless. Like she really wants every day to practice so that she can get the gist of it so that she can, mainly so she can play Skylanders by herself without me having to read some of the stuff for her. The middle child, Willow, is a different story. She's probably on a much more mainstream, like a very schooled sort of time. She would have started prep this year and I reckon she's spot on where most prep kids are. Next, jump over up. She says trust is key. I've really had to reassess, you know, do I trust that this will work? And then you have to really go back, take a step back and look at what's happened over the last six months and you can see that it is working. Annie Hutchinson lives in the Blue Mountains with her husband and their three children. My name's Charlotte and I'm 12. My name's Isaac and I'm 11. Um, my name is Justin and I'm 5. Critics of unschooling say unschooled children lack social skills and friends, but Annie's out to prove otherwise. We've come down here to meet up with other homeschool families um, for the kids to have a bit of fun there, to hang out with all their friends. Happy birthday to you! Hooray! Hooray! You know, people think that they don't get socialised and they're at home all the time and not really out in the world, but they do uh, get socialised very well. Today, the youngest child is three and the oldest, 14. 
Every Friday we meet up with this particular group, which varies, like sometimes there's a lot more people here. Um, we, uh, once a fortnight we meet up with multiple families um, whose children are interested in the game Minecraft. Um, yeah, that's a big event, they love that. Um, we go to sports. The Hutchinsons weren't always unschoolers. Charlotte and Isaac went to school and were then homeschooled before the family decided on unschooling. And so Annie has something to compare to. Charlotte was extremely shy and didn't really talk to anyone or make much eye contact at all. And yeah, now she's off and away. She, you know, she can meet someone for the very first time and within minutes they're off, you know, playing and having fun or whatever. Dr. Glenda Jackson is a homeschooling researcher and education consultant. She also homeschooled her four children. She says research shows homeschooled children are socially well adjusted and have good self esteem. One of the things that I unpacked with my research was that when the children were at home, they had a particular way of not thinking about themselves, comparing themselves to anybody. If they had an idea, they would just go with it. They have another idea, they'd go with it. They weren't thinking, well, what's so-and-so going to think about me if I'm doing something? The minute they went to school, they found that freedom to just be really challenged. But for many critics, adult life is the mark of success or failure. Can adults who are unschooled crack university or a career? Access to tertiary education is very limited because they don't sit for external examination. Professor Riley says unschoolers may not learn all they need to know to get into university, but it teaches children how to learn. I think, you know, there are always going to be gaps in education, but I think that unschoolers have this great capacity to really know what they know and to know what they don't know and then go look up what they don't know. You know, people say, oh, if they want to go to university, they'll need this, this, this. And I'm like, well, later on, if they want to go to university, if they want to go that much, they will do it on their own. They will find out this, this and this so they can go. Yeah, and if they don't, it's because they don't really want to go. <laughs> New Yorker Kate Friedkus is just one example of unschooling success. She has a master's degree in religion from Columbia University, is a part-time canter, a blogger and a full-time writer. I plan on working in a cubicle from nine... Or there's Dale Stevens, entrepreneur and author. Stevens founded the UnCollege program, where participants live abroad, pursue a creative project and complete an internship. Contrary to what you might think, I'm really not interested in burning books or raising classrooms or doing away with college as we know it. I simply want to change the notion that going to college is the only path to success. And I want to empower everybody, whether you're in the classroom or in academia, or outside of it completely, with the skills, tools, and aptitudes necessary to pursue your passion and change the world. Back in Sunbury, the children are keeping Shay busy. Tana is watching a documentary on rocket building. Harper is drawing, and Willow's practicing her handwriting. As much as home ed's not for everybody, school isn't for everybody either. Like, I don't think school should go away or should be banished or nobody should ever go to schools again. But it's not the only way of educating a kid. I mean, what, what do you think is going to happen? The unschooling view of education is 180 degrees different from that of our school system. Children do education for themselves. It's a normal part of all life. And one size does not fit all. Associate Professor Peter Orbison says unschooling raises some legitimate criticisms of schools, particularly curriculum. It's not organised around primarily broad capabilities like creativity, uh, communication, those broad capabilities which tend to be arguably valued in 21st century learning and even community leaders and industry leaders talk about them wanting in their workforce. School originated in the Industrial Revolution to produce workers. Associate Professor Orbison says schools still picture children as consumers of knowledge. Instead, children should create and produce their own learning. To move to a genuine unschooling, I think, would have been a mistake. To adopt many of the features of unschooling within other environments, I think, would be something that could be extremely attractive. So do schools need to be 
set up the way they are? Do they need to be primarily face-to-face -face environments where people move into one room and have English put into their brains and another room and have science put into their brains in, in an industrial model? Professor Riley says unschooling doesn't deserve to be discounted. It's just another option on the education spectrum. There are different things that work for different people. And I think that there are different choices. Um, and I, I know the richness of traditional school because I, I teach my teachers and I, I know I was publicly educated and I know the richness of that. Um, and from doing so much research on unschooling, I also know the richness of an unschooling environment. The reason we find it hard to trust our kids is because we were never taught that we could be trusted. Annie Hutchinson's youngest child, Austin, doesn't yet know the alphabet. So are you worried at all that he won't learn these things? No, not at all, okay. not at all. There has been times where I have worried and think, oh God, he's, I'm never, <laughs> he's never going to this or that. But he always does. So that reassures me when I have those thoughts again, that he's not at this stage. He does get there. As the day comes to an end in Sunbury, the Reynolds children ride their scooters with their dad. Everything filmed today has been of their own doing, and they've done a lot. Between the three children, there's been talk about biology and the water cycle, ballet practice, building, reading, writing, art and play. Sadly, a lot more people are knowing about it because it gets really beaten up in the media as this, oh my God, look what these freaky parents do to their children and they're ruining their lives. Because um, it can be, it's very easy to sensationalise as this really radical way of living. Um, and like you've hung out with me for a day, it's pretty boring really. Like families getting on with their kids and helping them learn stuff. While unschooling may be boring to a family that does it every day, it raises real questions about how children are educated. At the end of the day, for the Reynolds family, there's no argument unschooling works for them.